for now, we get to our next activity. We've taken a deep dive into vision, reach, alchemy, and rope team. How do we put all that together? One way to start is by changing the way we see things, shifting your viewpoint to allow yourself to change, progress, and reach towards your pledge. In this next activity, you'll explore new ways to reframe your perspective through photography. This session will be taught by world-renowned photographer, Moses Street. Moses has been a photographer for years and his wife, Penn Street, is an incredibly valuable member of our No Bearers community. I can't wait to see what Moses is up to. Let's head over now. All right, get ready for a wild ride. Here it comes. Hey, all you dudes out there, this is Station LSD, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and I'm the DJ, the Sandman, and I'm here to take you on a magical mystery tour of the greatest songs of the 60s. But what I'm actually here for is to show you how to use photography to change your life. It's simple, it's fun. Art has always been a transformational process. Whether you're a painter, sculptor, musician, photographer, art opens up your brain to possibilities. So this will be using your daydreams and visualization and going out and doing photos. It's a whole lot easier to take a crazy idea and go out and do it for a photo than it is to like actually make it a career. Like I always wanted to be a DJ. Well, here I am in my fantasy of it and it's fun. <laughs> and I don't have to go through the grueling part of doing it day after day after day. Uh, so get your cameras out, because I'm taking you on a magical mystery tour. All the photos in this video are examples of imagining the life that you want and what you want it to look like. And then coming up with photo ideas in advance of those ideas, and then going out and executing them. So about 40 years ago, I started teaching children to do it for children portraits. And they, of course, caught on to it really quick. So they became the writer, the director, the actor, and location person. And the adult's only job was to keep absolute silence and just take the picture that the child set up. And as you can see, the results are wonderful. I love movies. There is nothing more fun than spending an afternoon with friends duplicating a favorite scene from a favorite movie. It's also a really simple way of duplicating what I'm teaching in this video. The movie gave you the idea. You just have to figure out how you're going to do it and then go out and shoot it. It's that simple. Not into violent movies? Well, how about a romantic comedy? Thinking up a bunch of romantic shots for you and your partner will definitely lead to an afternoon of taking photographs that you won't soon forget. Or you want to try out a new look or some new clothing? Uh, plan yourself a fashion shoot and go out and Take the pictures of it, and you will see what other people see when they look at you in those clothes. You want to start a new activity that you've never done before, or maybe you didn't think you were capable of doing it? Well, any activity takes a long time to get good at it, but in the meantime, or to get started, you can do like this photo, where we're not that far from the car, we had planned it out. We just needed a good lighting, dramatic shot. That's it. Then that can extrapolate into longer walks, 
more photo ideas doing those walks so it stays fun. That can turn into hiking. And then one day, you might, like Melissa Simpson, find yourself at the top of a 13,500 foot mountain that she had summited at a no barriers, what's your Everest event. A lot of people would like to go back in time. And as anybody who follows me on social media knows, I will go to great lengths to go back in time. Here I am 120 years ago, the bartender at the Virginian Hotel in Medicine Bow, Wyoming. Fun way to do photos. This was a joke shot that I did while staying at a major dot commerce house. And uh, it was just funny to me, but that started the path with a lot of other things. <laughs> If you're thinking and nothing's coming out of your mouth, you're daydreaming. So what artists do is we jot down any great ideas that come up while we're daydreaming. And then once you have that great idea, then you focus in on that idea and you start figuring out, and this is where businessmen, they don't daydream, they think. No, they're daydreaming. Uh, but you're working on the problem of figuring out how you would do it. The other thing you do is visualization. No, you don't have to be a hippie to visualize because all visualization is, is you focus on the picture that you want to do and you imagine every aspect of it. So like for what I'm doing right now, talking to you, I pictured myself being on the front porch. Uh, so I've got an old 1900, 1800s house uh, in front of me, and then I'm surrounded by trees. It's hot. Uh, then you got to figure out your clothing. So you've got, uh, I decided to do a different hat, wear something bright, and uh, you're working it out until it's real and you're taking mental snapshots of a dream you had that's real. So that's the basic with daydreaming. Now, other ways of doing it is when you're making a major life change uh, or even a fun one like this that might turn into a major life change. <laughs> and in the meantime, we're gonna be having so much fun, it'll at least become a hobby bring friends in on it. Okay, so this, you want friends that you have a really good time with. Okay, you meet at a coffee house or what's ever good for you. And then you start brainstorming ideas off of your bucket list. And when you do this, they're gonna come up with all kinds of crazy stuff, funny stuff, really gross stuff, things that would just be way too embarrassing to do. Uh, uh, maybe something really emotional, maybe something physically impossible to do. Uh, it doesn't matter. You write them all down. So pick a secretary who loves writing the ideas down. And there can be no nodes. Negativity ends brainstorming. Oh, we got a great idea. We could uh, be running around the track and then fall flat on our face. And somebody comes around and goes, oh, what a stupid idea. That ends brainstorming. So no no's, no negativity in the brainstorming. Then another one is uh, do what really good artists do. Yeah, steal ideas from other artists and you've got it easy. Uh, we had to go to the library and find books to steal what artists did. Now you can go on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and one, you're going to find 
just hundreds of people doing the things you want to do. So take their ideas and then make them your own. Uh, and that is the basic of daydreaming your ideas. Ah, and the last focus thing, when you're visualizing it, you also want to visualize everything you're going to need to do it. So like I've got a little light stand tripod and a cell phone holder. And uh, if you're doing something more complicated, you might need some friends to help you do it. Uh, so that's the basic for this one. Your life is only as interesting as your photographs of it. And here is the very first step. You gotta make a bucket list. Bucket list. <clears throat> and you wanna write down everything on that bucket list that you want to do, um, activities you wanna do, trips you wanna take, careers you want, relationships you want. Um, anything and everything that would make your life a whole lot more interesting. And then of course, you develop those ideas into photos and then go out and do the photos you imagine. So to give you an example, this is a list uh, of things that I wanted. Um, a good relationship with my wife, number one and top of the list. Second, to be a good father. That's tied with number one. To be a movie actor, a writer, write stories, write novels, a uh, stand-up comedian, a world traveler, an inventor, an entrepreneur, live in cool places uh, and to have an exciting life one full of a lot of wild crazy often dangerous stories uh, I wanted to meet a lot of famous people and I have to admit I cheated on my list is I've done all those things and Give me a break. I had 73 years to pull it off, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I mean, I think I heard across the lake here uh, somebody thinking, wait, I'm not a photographer. I can't do that. I'm not creative. Uh, well, neither was I <laughs> when I started, uh, but I did carry a camera around from the time I was about 14 in high school everywhere, took it to jobs later and did that for about five years and for some reason people started thinking i was a photographer and there we went uh, and then in this it's kind of a mini class on how to be a creative photographer the point is digital cameras and cell phones they have become they have changed photography forever and they've turned photography into a folk art. You're out there, you're folk. Folk art is means a art form of the masses, just like folk music. Uh, it was music for the masses, created by the masses. And the cell phone and digital cameras have taken you ever needed to know about taking pictures out of the equation and so yeah you can be a photographer uh listen to the rest of this and you'll see how hey congratulations and excuse my uh friends here i don't i don't think i'm bothering them too much uh congratulations uh you did it you take your first picture now, the next thing you want to do is get it on social media because uh, the positive feedback is just what you need, positive feedback. And then you also want to make a hard copy of it, whether you print it out on a printer or go to Walgreens and get a cheap little 
four by six of it and then put it on a wall where you're going to see it every day and, and uh, like at your desk so you can look at it a lot. So it shows, I did that. I did that. And then uh, this leads to the hard part is making this a habit. But think about it. You've got a cell phone, so you're already taking a ton of pictures. Uh, and then, oh, poor baby, you got to sit around and daydream and, and come up with ideas and then visualize how you're going to do them and then uh, sit around figuring out what you're going to need to do it. And then, oh, the thrill of creating art. Uh, that's going to be easy to resist. I don't think so. So get going on. You want to do it every day, a couple times a week, uh, even just once a week. But get out and do it, and you'll start if nothing else, you'll start getting more followers on Facebook. <laughs> so in closing, feel the apathy and the fear. And then do it anyway. Hey. This last little set of pictures before the big finish is for me the most personally important reason to use photos to create the life that you want. Now, there is a reason that we artists have muses instead of girlfriends and wives, because life with the muse is really exciting because it is two people working together to create a bond. The bond of not only creating an idealized image of each other, but the bond of learning to work together in harmony to create an exciting life. That's why this is so important to me. Hey, we're going to take you folks to follow your dreams, or do you want to go back to the couch, your TV, and your snack food? Yeah. <laughs> I figured your dreams. Now, go out and shoot that dream. The creative process of bringing an idea to life, no matter how simple the shot, is often way more exciting than real life because you have taken an idea that didn't exist in your life and you've gone out and made it real. That is really exciting heady stuff, but the biggest deal is that there would not be a photo of what you had done unless you had done it. So it got you to do something out of your comfort zone, and there is the photographic proof. Live with it. Do it. Oh, hey there. I was just finishing up taking a few photos from our last session. Wasn't Moses great? Thank you so much, Moses, for leading us through that. I can't wait to get out and take more pictures.
up, I had a serious love for music. And when I went to college, that's when I started really having problems with my hearing. And because of a connective tissue disorder that I have, I lost all of my residual hearing in nine months and was dropped from the music program. And I lost myself in that. I felt like I had fallen down a dark well and nothing really felt real anymore. I realized in so many different ways that I have two choices. I can stay here forever, or I can figure out a way to take one painful step at a time to the possibility of something different. The reality of life is that you will hit a wall. You will struggle. And the choices that you make in that struggle are so important. The people who you surround yourself by are so important. I had so many people who've pushed me along the way who have refused to give up on me and to see for yourself that what's within you is stronger than what's in your way. And if you allow that mentality to sink in, this it time, will change your life. This time I'm gonna make it. I'm not the same. Outside of our control, we tend to go to the place of like we've lost everything, we don't have anything. And the one thing I've always said, and I've learned through my own experiences in life, is you still have one thing, and that one thing is the choice. But how do you respond? Like it's on you. At some point, you got to stop blaming the outside world. At some point, you got to stop pointing the finger at everyone else, and you got to look at yourself and say, What am I doing, or what am I not doing? because there's this space in between when the challenge happens and ultimately the outcome. There's a space and the outcome is determined by what happens within this space. That's determined by you. This is a, a ritual, this is a routine, this is a mindset that every single day when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, I probably slept bad last night. I probably am waking up worried about what happened yesterday or how it's gonna you know, spill over into the day and, and tomorrow possibly. Forget all that. Right now in this moment, I'm going to prepare my mind. I'm going to strengthen it. I'm going to kind of put some armor around it and just prepare it for whatever this day is going to be. But it's gonna start with me simply just saying to myself, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be in control. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to have faith. I'm going to believe. Like, that's literally the things that I say to myself. Lives are kind of like a storm. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a total whiteout in the mountains. Now, I can't see anyway, even in good weather, but my friends, somebody needs to be able to see and they can't. It's just total whiteout. Well, what is the tool that you use to navigate? I think our vision is like an internal compass. It guides us through that storm. It tells us where we're going and why it's so important that we get there. I think vision is figuring out what grows the light inside. I think it's really about connecting with our very deep core values uh, and, and understanding what those values are. When we live in alignment with those values, 
that light will blaze and it will show us the way. And it's not about what's out here, it's about illuminating what we have inside. Thank you.